Hey, welcome everybody to Kitzah Shulchan Aruch, the abridged code of Jewish law, chapter 96, number four. Okay, so we're speaking about the uh, end of Shabbos. The end of Shabbos. All right. Now, number four. Someone else, someone else in. Okay. Kivan Shigia Banish Moshois. Once we reach twilight at the end of Shabbos. So, as we know, in theory, Shabbos should be 24 hours. In practice, it's 25 hours. Why? Because there's some moment between Shkia, which is sunset, and Seisa Kachovim, which is, you know, we call it nightfall, but it's when there's three average size stars. So that twilight period, at some moment in between there, it becomes the next day. Now, we're not able to put our finger on the precise moment. So therefore, we have to be concerned that any moment in the twilight period may come, may be the turning point to become the next day. So therefore, on Friday, we start Shabbos at the beginning of the twilight period. We have to be concerned that even the very first moment might be the next day, which would be Shabbos. And so we start Shabbos at Shkia at the very, at, at sunset. Now the reverse is on uh, Saturday, right? When Shabbos, Shabbos day, uh, we have to make the very last moment or after the last moment um, the next day. In other words, now Sunday, in case any moment, including the very last moment, was still Saturday, was still Shabbos. So we get the twilight period on both ends. So once the twilight period on Shabbos afternoon begins, on the one hand, we're still saying it's Shabbos. So therefore, we can't do malacha and very things. But on the other hand, we have to be also concerned that it's possibly not Shabbos, in which cases we're going to mention that we can't eat until Havdalah because maybe Shabbos is finished and uh, therefore we need Havdalah to be able to, to eat. Number four, Kim Shigia Banish Moshis, once twilight period begins, Asalechol Alishtois Shundava. Can't eat or drink anything. Chutz minamayim, except for water, Kaidim Havdala before Havdala. The water you can have, I mean, again, you know, uh, not sitting down and having a big water party, but, um, you know, water isn't really. The most exciting drink in the world, and uh, you know it's just—it's more of a basic staple. So therefore, we're more lenient with water. Now, someone can can wait ten minutes, whatever it is, better to wait however long and and make up dollar first. But if someone, you know, let's say for an example over here, you know, it's uh, at the moment 105 degrees. So last Shabbos was 117 degrees. And I could imagine that, um, you know, those who walked a mile to shul or something probably needed a drink of water. Right? So they could have one before half dollar. Okay, I will also mention, although we, it's, it's probably obvious at this stage, if someone was unwell or dangerously dehydrated or various things, then they could have a drink of water anyway, because you know, we, we know when, when it becomes life-threatening situations or close to that, so most things are overruled. But anyway, once we get this twilight period, on the one hand, we're keeping Shabbos as if it's fully Shabbos because it may still be Shabbos. On the other hand, as it may be Shabbos ended, we have to not eat or drink until we make Havdal. Okay. Shemarech Besuda Shlishis. Now, someone who extends their third Shabbos meal. So they started it before twilight. And uh, they're having a long, they washed, they made hamotzi, and they're having this 
long Shabbos meal. Uh, so they wash the one and a half minutes for twilight, and they're going to have a five-hour meal. In problem most part, people aren't eating that long, but just let's make an extreme example, make it clear. Then Afilo Ataych Halayla, even if they keep going well into the night, Mutter is still allowed to eat. Why? Given the Shehiskel Beheta, they began the meal when they were allowed to. So since they began when they were allowed to, they can keep going. Now, what I'm going to say now is not what most places do. And we'll see in a few lines why it's different. But at this stage, when we bench, and those uh, who joined us this morning, we're talking about the, the uh, you know, the Birch the grace after meals, and often it is done over a cup of wine. The leader holds a cup of wine. And if we do that, you can even drink this glass of wine, this cup of wine. Because it's actually part of the meal. I mean, it's an extension of the meal. Okay. Now, as I said, those who have a delicious in their shul will know that we don't drink the cup of wine. So uh, how come it says we're allowed to? It says, This is specifically... Only when a person regularly, when they bench, they use a glass of wine to bench over. But those who, you know, sometimes they bench with a glass of wine, sometimes without a glass of wine, and the sometimes without is they rely on the view that it's not necessary to have a, a cup to bench on. So since they don't always do it, it's now like an optional extra as opposed to being part of the, the benching. Then also, then they can't drink this cup either before they make up dollar. And this is pretty much what we see everywhere. Uh, generally speaking, what happens is people save the cup and they make up dollar on their cup of wine. This is a side point, doesn't mention it here. But if a person made a mistake, you know, they, uh, they were leading the benching and they're holding the cup and they make a brocha bray pre goffin. They make the blessing on the wine afterwards. And you're not meant to drink, but you can't say a brocha for nothing. We can't say Shem's name in vain. So what do they do? Right after the bray pre goffin, they say the blessing of Havdalah and then they drink the wine. Once of this turn it into the half dollar. So uh, hopefully you or anyone else you know won't make that mistake. But if you do, or someone does, now you know what to do about it. Okay. Number five. Any questions on four? No? Okay, number five. Gam malocha in last question half dollar. Now we can't even do malocha. We can't do the activities that are forbidden on Shabbos, we can't do them before Havdalah either. Because until we make Havdalah, we haven't formally finished Shabbos. Um, now, now, the women who need to uh, light the candles before Havdalah, you know, remember in those days they didn't have electric lights, so there weren't lights on. So uh, generally the men were at shul, and uh, Shabbos finishes, and the, and the ladies want to, they don't want to sit in the dark, right? So they, they light some lights, or you want to put on a light or something. Yomro Techila, they have to first say, Boruch Hamavdil ben Kodesh Lecho, which means blessed is the one who separates between the holiness of Shabbos and the regular weekdays. And we, we discussed saying this before. And he's, he's saying they even have to say, not only that line, but you even keep saying, Ben Olo Hoshech, it separates between like darkness, Ben Yisola Omim, between the Jews and the other nations, Ben Yom Hashvi, the Sheshem Ayamaisa, between the seventh day and the six days of creation, Baruch Hamavdu Ben Kodesh Lechol, blessed is the one who separates between the holiness and the regular. Um, 
generally we don't say that whole thing. We just say the first section, Baruch HaMavda Mikodesh Lechol. And as I mentioned, uh, I think two weeks ago, the custom is to actually say it three times. Once is sufficient, but it's uh, custom to say three times. And now the Im Chal Yontav Yom Rishon, if it's that Sunday is the first day Yontav, like we just had now with Shavuos. So we had our Shabbos, now we're going into Yontav. Instead of saying, Baruch HaMavdil Ben Kodesh Lecho, blessed is the one who separates between the holy and the weekday. Instead, you say, well, we finish it off, HaMavdil Ben Kodesh Lechodesh. It separates between one level of holiness and another level of holiness. Okay. Have we confused everyone yet? Or oh, we're going okay? Yeah, David. I'm interested in the source, if you know, for the three times Brachem Oh, because the three times this makes it a chazaka. We have a, uh, a concept in Jewish law that three, when something happens three times, it gives it more of a strength. So it's not a requirement, but it makes it, you know, like you've, especially since it's not the full Havdalah. So we give it like that little extra uh, boost. Oh, so I'm asking regarding that particular custom, is that brought down in the Alta Rebbe Shulchan Aruch or Sefer Minhagim or a um, particular place that I could look at it? That's an excellent question. Next time. Because I'm sure it's written somewhere, but you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. The things that you do since you're a kid, you have no idea where it's written, and what and whatever you, you know is uh, in the it came as an adult. You can say sixteen sources because you you know you went looked it up and studied it yourself. So um, all right, God willing, next week we'll have something for you. Because I'm going to share it with my family. I'm going to say, where did this come from? We've been doing it just once for the last uh, umpteen years. Oh, well, then you tell them it's a, a Kabbalistic secret. And uh, if it's revealed to uninitiated, God forbid what you have to do, you know. No, no, God forbid, just joke, you know. But, so, all right. We'll, um, we'll find it. Okay, Vov, number six. Me Shemachal is Pala Arvis Mr. Shabbos. Someone, he... He says the evening prayer later than usual. So Shabbos, let's say, finished 7.30. And instead of saying, saying the evening prayer at 7.30, was 8.30. Or he continued his third Shabbos meal into the nighttime. Same example, Shabbos finished at 7.30. He watched at 6.30 when he was allowed to. And they kept having the Shabbos meal all the way to 8.30. So for him, it's Shabbos. Right? Because he hasn't ended Shabbos yet. He hasn't said Abdullah. Yet for almost every other Jew on the planet, it's not Shabbos anymore because they did dub it on time. They did make Abdullah. So you could have a situation here where um, for me, it's still Shabbos. And for another member of my household, Shabbos ended an hour ago. And by the way, what we're going to say here applies equally if we bring in Shabbos early. We know that we can, we can bring in Shabbos early from a time called Plag of Mincha. It's um, in the majority way, it's like uh, just, just over three quarters and it was more. It's like, but anyway, it's, it's almost... In the uh, it's, but it's it's uh, three quarters into the daylight hours, so you have a um, you can bring Shabbos early. That's the earliest time, and so you might have one person who's brought in Shabbos early, and someone else who's going to bring it in at the regular time. So again, you can have two Jews, two next door neighbors, two people in the same household, whatever it is. One has brought in, for one it's Shabbos, for the other one it's not. So, Mutalolayma, Fiddler Yisrael, Shkavi Yisrael, the Hivda, Shkavi Yisrael, Shkavi Yisrael, Shkavi Yisrael, 
you can ask another Jew who for them is no longer um, Shabbos or not yet Shabbos. Here we're talking about no longer, but same applies if you if you brought in Shabbos early and it's not yet Shabbos. And even if they didn't make proper Havdalah, they just said the mini Havdalah Marif in the evening prayer, you can ask them to do Malacha for you. You know, so all of a sudden, uh, you got all these people to turn on your lights, fix the oven, whatever it is. And you are allowed to have benefit from the, these malachas, these activities they did. And you can even eat something that they cook. You can, whatever it is. Even though when you're going to bench, you're going to say the blessing after your blessings, after your third Shabbos meal, you're still going to say Ritzay. You're going to mention Shabbos. 100% for you, Shabbos. But they can, uh, you can ask them to do whatever you like. So it's, uh, you know, it's an interesting situation where for some people it's Shabbos and some people it's not. Okay. Um, you, you don't really, yeah, David. I just want to ask if that's similar to a person who doesn't use the Erev, but he asks somebody else who does use the Erev on Shabbos to carry something for him. Okay, so that, that's that, that's a good one. You know, the before we get to that, the story, you know, where a non-Jew is not allowed to keep Shabbos, right? So there's someone who's about to convert to Judaism and they're practicing uh, keeping Shabbos. They have to deliberately break Shabbos at least once. So there was one fellow who's almost finished his conversion. The rabbi asked him, uh, what, what do you do to break Shabbos? He says, I wear sitzes, you know, because the string hangs, which if you don't have the mitzvah to do it, it's carrying. If you have a mitzvah, then it's, you know, it's part, it has a purpose. The rabbi says, but there's an Erev. He says, I don't hold of that Erev. Right. That's, uh, so that's, anyway, but the, the question is like this, I, I would say, I mean, I'm not, I'm going to say morally. Morally means depends. Why don't you use the Erev? So if you hold it's not a good Erev, then you shouldn't ask someone. If for you, you know, you're of the opinion it's a good Erev, but there's other reasons. Some people don't use an Erev because if the children grow up always using an Erev, they, you know, they don't realize you can't carry on Shabbos and, and then they go somewhere where there's no Erev and, you know, they carry, you know, so some people have other reasons why they don't use it. So, you know, if you feel it's a good Erev and you just have side reasons why you don't use it, then there's no problem to ask. But if, if the, you feel it's, it's, it's not a good Erev, then um, you really shouldn't ask. And I'm not going to comment, at least in public, on any specific Erev. Right, Anna, you're, you're next and then... Um, yeah. um, when you're talking about finishing uh, Shabbos uh, earlier or late, are you talking about twilight time, the, the uh, difference between the sunset and nightfall, or in general? I'm a little bit... So, so there's two things. There's starting Shabbos early. So there's a time... Uh, so from about two-thirds through the daylight period, so, you know, winter and summer, there's going to be different times. From that time onwards, sorry, three quarters, not two thirds. From three quarters, you can start bringing, you could start Shabbos early. So this, you can't finish early. You can either start early or you can finish late. So now we can extend Shabbos. There's still limits. You know, you can't bring Shabbos early, you know. I'm going to make a Shabbos on Wednesday. You know, it, it can only be a, you know, that small amount of time early. And late um well we still need to say the evening service so we're gonna have to end up before dawn right that's so it that is it we it is in the frame of twilight timing anyway when you're talking well, well it's gonna be pre-twilight because twilight you have to start it anyway 
Okay. So someone's bringing it early is before twilight. Before twilight. and 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 you can't finish it till after twilight. So someone finishing late is going to be, you know, past twilight. But how much earlier you're talking about? What what time frame is it? So it's it's a one and a half hour halachic hours. Okay. But halachic hours means we divide the the amount of time as daylight to twelve. So just to give an example, just look today. So in Phoenix, which doesn't help you too much, That's unless okay. you're in Phoenix. No, I'm just, in Minneapolis. <laughs> but, but just to just give an example. So midday here is 1228 today. The sunset is 740. Okay, but this plug of Mincha, this uh, earlier time is 610. So it's 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 well it happens to be one and a half um, clock hours pretty much. But it's one and a half halachic hours, which means halachic hours we take however long it is light, we divide it in twelve. So in summer, that could sometimes be an hour and a half on the clock each hour, because it's you know it's light for eighteen hours, whatever it is. And in the middle of winter might be forty or forty five minutes. Because you know it gets it's dark. Yes, I'm sorry. Did you okay. pronounce your name? Is yeah. No, it was uh, someone else. Quick, how do I pronounce your name? B. B. Okay. Welcome, by the way. Thank you. I got a couple of minutes late. The thing wasn't working right, but anyway, um, I'm very interested in this concept of early Shabbos. Yes. Uh, yes. For the dinner. Let's say that normally it's seven thirty. Uh, here I'm I'm on in Florida, so it would be roughly seven thirty. Now, if I wanted to eat at seven o'clock, that is acceptable. We light the candles at that time and then go ahead. Yeah. So th this time, plug a minute. Rabbi, just said is one Rabbi, half. Let me let me let me because I I deal with this pretty much all the time in Florida. Yeah. So, plug mincha um, is around um, six thirty-three. This was last Shabbat, and candle lighting was at six fifty-three. Right. That would be seven so, o'clock almost. Yeah, and, well, and that's going to move as throughout the year. No, so you can't you can't light if you're going to do an early mincha and do the early candle lighting. It cannot be before seven uh, six fifty three. So let's say if you light your candles as we did last week at six fifty three or six fifty five or even seven o'clock, that would be okay. And then you, you, once you, can't you do light that, candles so plug time, a mincha. Say again. Unlike candles, plug a mincha, but you just have to have enough, you know, large enough candles, enough oil that's going to keep burning into the nighttime. Right. So, you know, in the middle of summer, sometimes plug a mincha can be like this, even two hours, depending where you live, but theoretically, it could be two hours before nightfall. So, um, you know, you have to have very large candles or, or a lot of oil, whatever you're, you're lighting, that's going to keep going into the nighttime because the purpose of the candles is to have benefit from it when it's dark. So um, whatever that time plug of Mincha is, and, and it's hard to say the time because every week is going to be different and every place is going to be different. Right. But I'm, I'm sure there's, uh, it's, and it's not usually in the calendars, <laughs> regular candle lighting is, but there are uh, free apps. I don't know if you have a smartphone. Yeah. But there's uh, there's Manim. Ultimate Manim, Manim is a free app. It's and called it MyManim.com. Yeah, you set it to your location. And um, it'll give you each day you click on it and it gives you all the times. So, you know, that, that's one way to do it. Or I'm sure... Uh, your local rabbi um, will be familiar with, you know, your local times. And uh, so whatever time that plug of mincha is, 
that's the earliest you can you can bring in Shabbos. So you can't light candles before that. If someone did light candles before that, they have to light again and even say the bracha again. Right? In other words, they didn't do anything. Um, and you know that's 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 the earliest Shabbos can be brought in. I will also point out if you live in a in a one shul town. You know, very few of us do nowadays because even even the smallest places with three Jews still have two shuls. <laughs> but um, you know, if you live in a one shul town, if the shul brings in Shabbos, in other words, the community brings in Shabbos, then you early, then you have to as well. You can't you can't go against the community. But if you're in a shul that has, if you're in a town that's multiple shuls or multiple uh, minions, minyanim in the same shul, and there's an early one and a later one. Then, uh, you know, you can go which, whichever one you prefer, whichever is more uh, suitable for you. Um, if, although I mentioned before about two people in the, in the same household, one bringing Shabbos early, one not, that's not really technically correct in the spec that we'll say, let's say if the head of the household, you know, is, you know, if you bring in Shabbos early, then um, the rest of the family should as well. So, you know, if, if, if I would go to a shul that brings in Shabbos early, so our, our shul happens to bring it pretty much of the time, but I have been in places in the past where we brought in Shabbos early. Then, before I say the Mizmo Shiliyoma Shabbos, you know, my wife and, and daughter should light candles. In the proximate time, uh, you know, so the, the whole house is, whole household is, is uh, bringing Shabbos together. Thank you. Um, but seven o'clock, you know, if, if Shabbos, you know, if candle lighting is even before seven, then seven o'clock should be pretty good. Okay. That's what I want to know. <laughs> but again, you know, although I've already said it, I'm going to keep repeating myself, but it's important to remember that it keeps changing as the year goes because it depends how long it is light at any period of time. So the time the plug of minister is in summer uh, is going to be very different to winter. And so just some, some, you shouldn't get a time in your head and say, well, I can do this time. You know, it's, it's going to fluctuate as you, you move around the year. Yeah, Bob. Rabbi. Rabbi. Yeah. Uh, just to give her an example, here in North Miami Beach, uh, for this coming Shabbat tomorrow, uh, Mincha will be at 6.38, which is five minutes later. Like and minute, normally, yeah. 20 minutes afterwards, that's when candle lighting will be. So it'll be 6.58. So come, let's say, next week, you may, you know, you may want to light at 7 o'clock, but that will be too early for Plaga Mincha. Yeah, it could be. So you, you need to, you, you need to get, for example, the maizmanem.com uh, uh, app on your phone and it will tell you when uh, Plaga Mincha is. Thank you. Okay. Yes, David. Um, the lighting of candles, uh, you asked me at Plaga Mincha or after. How does that affect uh, making kiddush? If a person wants to make kiddush early and have the meal early before plaga yeah. mincha, so um, nothing can be done before plaga mincha. Wow, nothing can be done before plaga mincha. You can't make kiddush. You can't can't uh, daven. Uh, you can't um, light candles. Uh, when my oldest kids were very little, so we only had little kids, um, and. Uh, you know, where I lived, there was just only a minion pretty much at, at the time. And, and they weren't able, you know, they weren't up that late. So we used to, so I used to do like a um, little kids davening with them, you know, sing a few songs. And, um, you know, I think they made some sort of kiddish, you know, just a break break off and whatever it was. And we had the meal. And they went to sleep, whatever, whatever time they went to sleep. When I came home from shul, we used to, you know, sing shamalech and make kiddush, and we had dessert. My wife and I had dessert, and uh, and then benched. 
you know, had a mozi dessert and benched. So that was, you know, so there were times that with, with little kids, just so the little kids otherwise they'll fall asleep and they won't know there's such a thing as a Shabbos meal, right? You know, as, as they got a bit older and then once we had sort of mixed ages, you know, the, the kids at a five o'clock, you know, fell asleep at, at six, uh, when now it's the next lot of kids who are, who are five years old and uh, they've got older siblings, they, they find a way to stay up. You know, as, as long as the older siblings up, so are the younger ones, you know, it's, uh, didn't have that problem for long, but there was a time. Okay. Um, Zion, number seven. When you pour the cup of wine for Abdullah, you should pour it that it fills right to the, the brim. It overflows a little bit. Now, some people have a custom to do that on every cup that they say a blessing on. Kiddush, benching, various things. But, you know, that's customary. But the Abdullah, you're meant to. It's actually uh, interesting. The the uh, when it comes to Friday night, some people do overflow it, and some people just put it right to the brim. So the the Badich of a rabbi, he used to have a uh, kiddush cup that one side of the brim was higher than the other. So when he filled it up on one side, it went to the brim, and the other side it overflowed. So he could be like every you know, do it like everyone. So um, anyway, but the Havdalah, we, we let it overflow a little bit. This is a sign of blessing. Right? So it's like uh, the blessings are overflowing into our, into our lives. This is also why some people have a custom. They sort of cup their hand and hold the, the cup in the cupped hand because then the blessings overflow into the hand. You know, not everyone does that. Some people, there's all different customs how to hold the uh, Kiddush or Havdalah cup. But, you know, that's a common custom. And that's why. So we pour the wine, we overflow it. Step one. Next, when I tell us a case for Yomin, we take it in our right hand. I take the cup in our right hand. Now, what many people do, especially if they're going to end up holding it like this, you can't, you can't pick it up like that because... You can't get your hand underneath it until you've uh, picked it up, right? And we're meant to ideally pick things up with our right hand. So what many people do is they pick up the cup in their right hand, put it into their left hand, and then with their left hand, they place it in position on their right hand. But if you just hold the cup like regular, if you have a different custom, you just pick it up with the right hand. So they pick it up with the right hand, and the, the S have some in the small... It says the besomim, the spices, you put in your left hand, holds in his left hand. Now, that was the custom where he was. Most people don't actually pick up the besomim until they're the spices, until they're ready to make the blessing. So whether you're holding your left hand or you left it on the table, but what, whatever you happen to do, that's what happens until you make the blessing. So the Havdalah actually starts in Great Prayer Goffin. Now, pretty much all, all Jewry has some introductory verses. So most Ashkenazim, it's the Hine, Kali Shuasi. Um, some Sfarim also say those verses. Some have some Sfarim have different verses. But yeah, it's like an it's a in, introduction. If someone did a different introduction or no introduction, after the fact, they've definitely made half dollar. But... Um, Normally, we're going to start with these introductory verses. Then we make the blessing on the wine, the very big off. At that point, now you put the cup into your left hand. And then you take the the spices into your right hand because you're going to say the blessing on them. So they go to the right hand. We make the bracha, right? Bracha, the came Blesses Hashem, we created different types of psalmim. We'll say uh, spices for lack of a better word. The psalmim really means 
uh, nice smelling spices. Right, I guess uh, curry is also a spice, but you know you don't really use it for abdul. You know? Yes, Susan. Uh, are you talking about plants that you pick, like lavender? Uh, in in concept, yes. The problem is if you take ones that actually leaves, then you actually need to say different blessing. So people normally use um, uh, allspice. Yeah, allspice. Oh, okay. Use one of those cloves. You use cloves. Um, you know these type of things. Uh, what's azo? Is hyssop or something? Is uh, so the uh, the live the leaves are different blessing from the other. Correct. You been you join the Talmud class in the morning. I see. Learn about the blessings. Yeah. Right. So that's 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 right. So that's why now having said that, although technically, well, one when one has opportunity, they should be more specific with the blessing and say the most specific blessing. But Bahrain, the name is Somim is an inclusive blessing. So if one said that on anything after the fact, they have fulfilled the obligation because it, it includes everything else. You know, I'd be a little bit like for mistake saying the blessing on a on a on a, a, a fruit a produce that grows from the ground. If you said that on something that grows from a tree, now after the fact you fulfilled your obligation because the tree came out of the ground. Well, if you did it the other way round, on a potato, you said the blessing that came out of the tree. You did not fulfill the obligation because potatoes don't come out of the tree. But apples, even though it grows on a tree, but the tree came out of the ground. So after the fact, if you said the fruit that came from the ground, so it's a more general blessing. So Brahman and Islam is also a more general blessing. So that's that's what we do. So make the blessing on the wine, transfer the wine to the left hand, pick up the aromatic spices, make the blessing. Then we make a blessing on the candle. And we can discuss shortly what type of candle, but let's just call a half dollar candle for now. And uh, and then you transfer the cup back to your right hand and you say the actual blessing of Havdalah. Now, of course, many people have a custom in the meantime, once they made the candle on the light, on the sorry, the blessing on the candle. Not only do they look at it, but they actually reflect the the candlelight in their in their nails. Now, the reason for this, and I think I think we mentioned it the other week, was that um, Adam Adam Arishan, the first the first human, and he uh, he had some type of covering of nails uh, over his skin, or perhaps it was his skin. You know, although I'm old, I'm not that old, so I didn't see him. So I can't tell you exactly what he looked like. But we're told he was covered with, with nails. He, well, his nails can, you know, covered more of his body. And he got kicked out on the Friday. Right? He was only created on the Friday. You know, he only lasted about two hours, you know, four, two, three hours before he got kicked out. So, um, Anyway, then that first Saturday night, the first Motsu Shabbos was the first fire. And the flames reflected, he noticed it reflecting in his nails and it reminded him of his coating of nails and what could have been. And it gave him a, a drive to try and repair the damage that had been done and, and to bring back what could have been. And so that's what we do. So most people only have the custom that men reflected in the nails because it happened to be it was Adam. It was his nails. It wasn't cover. Didn't go on her nails. So um, so we do there. All right. So after we've done that, Allah Gomer, after he's finished the blessing of Havdalah, Yoishev he sits down. The Shaisa Kuskuloyba Atmoy. And you should drink. The entire cup himself, for the contents of the cup, of course, not the actual cup. 
Right? So he drinks, uh, and he, he has to drink at least the majority. But March Nisha Bekois, and if there's a little bit left in the cup, then Shavka Machaba in there. He pours it out over the candle and extinguishes the candle with it. And this has really become our custom in the first place. We drink majority of the cup and we pour some out over the candle, we put it out. Um, and we, we put some, we like apply it, this wine wax mix uh, on our eyes to show the uh, how precious the mitzvah is. And, um, you know, uh, it's, it's also a segula. Now, segula, there's no English translation. You know, often people can translate as good luck charm, but, you know, that's, that's not Jewish. What segula is, you know, just, just to give a parable, you know, there's someone's working in a job and they would like a bonus. Now, at the end of the day, it's up to the boss whether he gives a bonus. But there are certain behaviors that one can do that make it more likely they're going to get a bonus. Right? And there's, having said that, there's also certain behaviors one can do that are going to make sure that he doesn't get a bonus. Right? There's, there's, there's different types of things. So when we talk about a segula, it means we behave in a certain way that makes it more spiritually possible that something's going to happen. And there can be segulas in the negative. Right? There's, there's, there's certain things like, uh, say, for example, uh, having olives without putting a drop of olive oil on them. Uh, it, 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 or eggs without salt, a little bit of salt. It aids one to forget their Torah learning. And I don't know about you, but I've got enough problems remembering already. I don't need help to forget. So uh, we're trying to avoid these things. And the certain segulas, certain things that you do, it makes it more likely things to happen. So uh, putting the wine on one's uh, eyes is good for good eyesight. You sort of dip your pinkies in the thing you put on and in your pockets is a segula for, uh, for wealth. Now, although I can't say I've come across any great wealth yet, but uh, imagine I didn't do it. I'd really be in trouble. No, but, but um, you know, so that's, that's uh, that. And just to finish, I know we've got a question, just to finish the, uh, the halakha and all the questions. Nahagim shem and noshim shoshis akhoys habdala. And it's customary for women not to drink from the habdala cup. Now it's brought down in a few places that drinking from the habdala cup helps you grow a beard. Ah. So that may be a reason why some women avoid it. That may be the origin of the uh, custom that women don't drink from the habdala cup. Yes. You're on mute. I read once about why women don't drink the wine that men do <clears throat> is because men think in blocks, you know, like a block of time or whatever, which is yeah. what Shabbos is, where a woman doesn't, she gets the big picture. She doesn't think in blocks, you know, and that's a big frustration between a woman and a man, I think. You know, we think in blocks. She says, <laughs> I thought it's very interesting. Yeah. So they don't drink wine from the... From, uh, you know, uh, Rabbi Y. Jacobson, he says it's like uh, waffles and spaghetti. That's how he describes it. Waffles, everything's uh, compartmentalized, and spaghetti is all. But as I've only, at least in this lifetime, been a man, and not, I can't honestly compare the two to uh, tell you I didn't experience both. Rabbi? Yes, me. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Um... Apropos of the uh, Shabbos, um, we read the Ashes Chaya, uh, the, the woman, um, they give credit to the woman. The, yes, yes. <clears throat> when I hear my son-in-law do that, it seems to me there's not much credit there. There's a load of work and uh, the husband sits and, and prays at the gate and the wife is working like a dog there doing all kinds of things. And I wonder why, why not give 
real credit here and and say it's a very uneven situation as far as well, I know. Yeah, that's a good question. So really the Aisha's Chayel is, is got nothing to do with husbands and wives. If it's uh, it's actually the wife is the Jewish people and the husband is Hashem. And oh. um, and it's and and each of the things a woman does uh, represent different mitzvahs and 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 different challenges of the Jewish people. So that's the real purpose of Aishas Chayel. However, since generally, again, and nowadays it's, uh, it's perhaps not as much, but generally, traditionally, uh, men worked out of the house more than, than women did. Mm -hmm. And it was the, the women who did the bulk of the Shabbos preparations. So the custom developed that they would say this, even though it's not really a husband and wife, but to sort of, you know, give some recognition no, we don't just take it for granted that you spent all uh, Friday and maybe Thursday night cooking, but we appreciate it. So that, that, that's, that's how that developed. Even though the actual things that it says may not be what, you know, any one human being actually does. Exactly. You know, all, all those things. You know, it's, it's talking about the Jewish people as a whole. And, and, and uh, you know, and in general, our relationship is husband and wife. You know, that's why we say God is <coughs> Excuse me. Because as we know, one of the 13 principles of Jewish faith is God doesn't have any physical attributes. So how can you say he and she? But I, again, I think we mentioned this in one of the classes uh, one time that um, the, uh, you know, for example, when you, you're putting something together, sometimes you get a instructions, you know, you insert the male piece into the female piece. You know, it's a piece of metal. One's not a male, one's not a female. No, but it, it's it's just a, a way of speaking to to help us understand a certain idea. So when it comes to developing a child, the the husband gives, the, the woman takes it within her, inside herself, adds her uh, contribution, and she develops it. And the result is the child. Now, obviously, that's an oversimplification, but we, we all understand. So Hashem gives us, Hashem, so to speak, in this relationship to the husband, he gives us the ability by giving us mitzvahs to utilize and transform the physical material world into something spiritual. We take our own abilities, our soul powers, and we develop that by doing the mitzvahs, studying Torah, that whatever we happen to be doing. And the result, the spiritual result is the child. And the ultimate spiritual result eventually is the transformation of the world into the messianic era. So that's why we talk about in the Torah, God being a he, you know, we're the she, the entire Jewish people. So, uh, you know, God is not a he. You know, it's... Uh, so some men uh, didn't get the message. <laughs> well, some, some did. Yeah. Those who, uh, who studied the message got the message. And those who chose not to, what, what, what can you do? And that's 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 uh, an unfortunate part of the human nature is is often we we like to understand what's convenient for us to understand, but ma many people try to be the best that they can, in which case uh, you know hopefully everyone understands. So this whole Aisha's Chayil really is 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 a parable. Like for example, the whole Shira Shirin, the song the song of songs. It's like a on the surface it's a love story, but really it's it's a whole parable of the Jewish people and Hashem. And again, every aspect reflects a certain uh, different mitzvah and various things. And actually, when the Anshin Knesset's Gedoyla, the men of the Great Assembly, when they sealed off the Tanakh, the, the close of the Bible, they actually debated, should we put Shira Shirim in the Bible? I mean, on the one hand, it deserves to be there. It's written by King Solomon. It's, the, it's, it's deep in, down inside. It's, it's, it's incredibly holy. The problem is if people are just superficial and they don't understand the deeper meaning, it just looks like a, you know, a love novel or something. And, and, and people are going to get the wrong... People who want to be superficial are going to get the wrong idea. So maybe we should leave it out. In, in the end, of course, they decided to include it because it belongs there. And those who can only look at things superficially, well, you know, you, 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 you can't run the world for fools. What can you do?
So the, the same as with Aishas Chayil. It's really, it's, it's, it's a deep problem. And like each thing that, you know, say for example, the, you know, uh, making the thread that refers to the mitzvahs of tzitzahs and talus and different things. You know, everything is a different mitzvah. And we meet the husband, the gate that's taking the, the messages of, of the Torah, of, of the study and putting them into our lives. You know, so it's, uh, but still, we need to show some appreciation. Um, I have to say that the last few years, maybe more than 10 years, my wife and I haven't had to work that hard to prepare Shabbos because all the kids make something. Um, but now it's heading back. You know, the kids are starting to all get married, you know, thank God. And all of a sudden, we have to, we have to do something ourselves again. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's how it goes. Thank you. You're welcome. David. I had two uh, short questions. Yeah. One is, um, uh, you're, you're talking about uh, dipping some of the wine uh, by the eyes. Yes. And also by the pockets for livelihood. I yep. noticed that in the I noticed that it doesn't mention about behind the ears. Is that uh, an extra thing or? Um, there's there's people who do all kinds of things. The people actually dunk the whole face into the cup, oh. into the plate. You know, it's uh, one of, one of my sons actually does that. <laughs> So the ears is there's the ears all different a, all different customs, you know. It's, so uh, again, it's the idea custom. of wisdom, bringing some wisdom. That, that's that's the you know because it's meant to be the brain, so, you know. But um, so behind the yeah. ears is a custom, and behind yeah. the eyes is actually well, it's based also on it's Oh, okay. And the second question was um, about five years ago. Someone told me, and we started to do this. They said that women do not. Uh, should not be the ones that put the Havdalah candle out. Are you, have you heard of yeah, that? Yeah, well, the person who made the blessing on the cup should pour the, the wine over the cup. So it's not necessarily women per se, it's just the man who, and generally it's the men who make Havdalah. Well, really, um, men can make for women Havdalah, but Havdalah women can't make for men. But, but you could have a group of women. Whoever makes the Havdalah is the one who pours it. Uh, over the cup, over the I, over the wine. I thought this was. Uh, they said the the reason had something to do with women's participation in uh, the uh, the whole sin of uh, the tree of the, the tree of good and knowledge. Look, I mean, uh, you, can, you can read things to everything, but at the end of the day, Adam also ate the fruit. You know, it's. I mean, Chava has certain responsibility because she was the one that initiated. But it's it's more of a, it's more practical. You know, I don't, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to take any, away anyone's spirituality, but it's 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 full practical that um, these time-bound mitzvahs, uh, there's less of an obligation on 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 women, and the havdalah is part of this time-bound. So mm -hmm. although a woman has an obligation for havdalah, but she has less of an obligation of a man, or a man has more of an obligation. So therefore, a, a man can make havdalah for anyone with equal or less obligation but no one can make Abdullah for someone has a great no any other thing for someone has a, a greater obligation right so this is um so it's it's really the, so it ends up being the man who makes Abdullah unless it's a group of ladies making amongst themselves and and it should be the one that made the blessing on the cup after he drinks the amount he pour, he pours over the the candle. So it's more a practical thing, you know, is, is that, you know, the Torah is the product of Shem's infinite intellect. So it can always go infinitely deep. So are there, are there deeper lessons and teachings? There is in everything. But, you know, on a very practical level, it's just practical. You know, that's how it ends up. Okay. Number eight. Pizim. Now, there's some people who, in their psalmim, in their spices, they put this thing called pism, which in English generally is translated as musk. Now, I don't think I've seen anyone do that, but I guess in Hungary uh, 200 years ago, they used to do that. The reason they do that, because again, those who, who learned that section in the time of Bronchus know that there's, there's different possible 
blessings you could say on spices, depending, is it a leaf, is it a branch, is it, is it a fruit, various things. But according to all opinions, musk is brave and So if you put in some musk, that's There are some people also smell after they smell the other spices. You also take a myrtle branch and give it a smell. This Abed by Mitzvah had the Zimna, and the reason for this is that it was already used for a Mitzvah once, right? Used it on Sukkot. And I guess if you keep it in the fridge, you can keep it somewhat fresh and smelling nicely for a little while. And Sabed by Nami Mitzvah Acharissa, so it's nice, something that was used for a Mitzvah once, you can use it for another Mitzvah. And likewise, some people, they put clothes, they stick the pointy end into a Esrug. You know, there's all, all kinds of things that with this idea. Okay, test number nine. This is the one I want to get in today. Haner. Now the Havdalah candle. Mitzvah Shema Shaivim Eizener is Kulim Yachad. The preferable way to do it is that you, the candle she made of wax and they should be singular candles that are woven together. She avuka, and therefore it's not called a nair, it's called a, a vuka. Now, vuka probably, you know, in other contexts, you're going to translate it as a torch. You know, like uh, taking the caves, you know. Thank God none of us, uh, <laughs> that's not our childhoods, you know, walking through the outside with these big torches, you know. But uh, that's, that's, that's an avuka. Um, so the preferable way is not to make on a candle, but rather an avuka. So it means it's multiple wicks, and it, it's, it's a bigger fire. Now, vim aimloy, you don't have one. You don't have a regular half dollar candle where everything's, uh, you know, uh, woven together. So what do you do? Yavarach Hashem Neres Acherim. She's Karo Yachom Shalahevus. You take two regular candles, and you bring them close, so the flames becomes one flame. And you make the broth on that. Stay a vuka, so you've made an artificial vuka. It's not a vuka in of itself, but it's you're holding it in a way that it, it isn't a vuka. And the custom is that after you make the broth of you thank Hashem for creating the light of fire. The staff limits of Pranayim, you look into your fingernails. The Yeshlirois, Bispani Yad Yomim, though those who only look at their right hand, uh, only look at the right hand. Gam the Hagim Mustafa Bakafi Yad Yomim, and the those that also look at the left hand, like they do both. The Yeshlirois, Arba its boys, I will God all the take Kafi Yad, and you should bend the fingers over with the thumb inside. So it's like this your thumb is inside. Stuff with the point of a cafe yad was achas, so you can and, and you hold it upwards so you see the the fingernails and your palm at the same time. So you don't um back talk question this boys with stuff with one of frame, and afterwards then you spread out the fingers and you look from the back. And that's uh common Ashton, that's the Ashkenazi custom. And the reason that we put it all together is we want to be able to see it all in one shot. You get the full benefit um, one shot. Okay, let's do one more short one. Soma, a blind person. Shem should bless us. We should know from these things. He can't make a blessing on the candle because he doesn't get benefit from the light. Misha Aina Maria, and if there's someone who's unable to smell, uh, see, they even had COVID back then, right? Mm. Nah, whatever. But anyway, they they person who, who can't smell. He can't make a blessing on the spices. Or she can't. All right, any questions? Yes, Susan. So uh, I... If, if there's no man living in the house, 
uh, he's passed away. No, then the lady makes it herself. Right, and, and it's still considered a mitzvah, correct? Yes, yes. Just she can't make Havdalah for a man. Right, okay. Lots of other things she can do, but not that. Yeah, David. Uh, somebody asked on the chat, what's the name of the app? So there's a couple, there's one called Zamani. It's spelled Z-M-A-N-I-M, yeah. Zamani. And then mm -hmm. there's another one, which is called Official My Zamani App. But I think, you. uh, yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, I think the one that I have is just, is my, it says on the phone, Ultimate Zamani, but. My Zamani. Ezra yeah. they're both they're both very good <coughs> and um the other thing sometimes they give you options though <coughs> excuse me so you have to set it to your uh you have different choices some of the times so um, Rabbi Wernick, yes um if the woman is making the havdalah because of her, you know, because she's conversant more so in the Hebrew and so on. And it's a, because there's a lot of blessings in the one that we use in our Sidur. Um, and yeah. uh, the husband is going along and saying it also. Is that okay? Does that. Yeah, that, that that's fine. Okay. That's fine. Thank yeah. you. No problems. Thank you. It's, then they're both saying, it's not one saying for the other. Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, I guess we'll uh, we'll finish there. So we'll uh, wish everyone a wonderful Shabbos and a wonderful Rabbi. week. Rabbi. Yes, have a good Shabbos. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rabbi. 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 Thank you,